Typo negative frontman Peter Steele, who sadly left us back in 2010, was always one of my favourite people to interview for Kerrang! magazine. I met and interviewed the big man several times over the years and always looked forward to seeing him. Peter was charming, very witty, very funny, very deadpan, and weirdly, I think, a little bit shy. You're about to hear an interview I did with Pete in 1996 at Brooklyn's System 2 recording studio where the band were recording their October Rust album. In fact, you can even hear the studio's telephone ring at one point just for added authenticity. This is the first of my countless interview tapes that I'm digitizing and sharing with you here at Possessed by Metal. And if you'd like to encourage me to do more of this kind of thing, then be sure to hit like and subscribe. The photos that accompany this interview are by my old Kerrang colleague, and yes, that's colleague with a K, Paul Harris. Have a look down in the video description for a link to Paul's site where you can order these photos and more as prints. Right, let's hear Pete talk about subjects like losing his virginity, monsters and murder. I mean, do you think that this album is more about, um, you know, expanding on the quality of what you did with Bloody Kisses more than shocking people anymore? Do you think your motives have changed? Yeah, as far as shocking people's, uh, people goes, I, I think that I've finally gotten that out of my system. Mm. You know, uh, I guess I was having a tantrum, so to speak, you know, like a little kid, you know, screaming for attention, more or less, and, uh, you know, now that I've got the attention, some of which is unwanted, mm -hmm. I can finally be myself, I guess, and write songs that really mean something to me. Yeah. You know, instead of screaming, like, God is dead for 20 minutes on stage. <laughs> All right. Does that mean that you now regret, you know, some of the things you, you did in the early days of Definitely. Piper? Definitely. I mean, you know, some of the things I felt were a bit immature. Such uh, as? Like the shock value thing. They mm -hmm. were, it was uh, sensationalistic. You know, um, some of the interviews that I did with Europeans, I believe that I should have been a bit more sensitive, uh, politically speaking. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, World War Two was not fought on on this continent, uh, World War Three, maybe, mm -hmm. but not World War Two. No. The earliest memory mm -hmm. that I, that I have is actually being in a in a baby carriage on my back <coughs> and having my older sister tuck me in. Right. I must have been, I don't know, six months old, a mm. year old. Who, who the hell knows? That's quite a one. Yeah. Is it, is that you think that's very significant? <laughs> well, I think what is uh, significant is having been surrounded by women. Yeah, five sisters. All of my life, you know, five older sisters, I have five younger nieces. That's right. So I'm like the man sandwich, you know, mm. I'm just like, like this piece of meat stuck between <laughs> all this, this, this estrogen, mm. you know. And, uh, and I was really, really upset that people thought that I hated women and I was like a, a misogynist and like pro-rape and all this other bullshit where, I mean, I was always extremely uh, uh, protective of, of my sisters and, you know, when I got this label, you know, then, I, you know, I, I knew that I had done or said something either wrong or that could have been taken two ways and it was taken the wrong way. Mm. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's fair to say that I am sexist now because I hate men. <laughs> I, I don't like competition. Don't trust them. Nope. As far as you can throw them. I mean, any, any creature born with testicles is uh, basically like a born liar. Right, and I've got three testicles, so I don't know what that makes me. Well, I think we can draw that because it's dream bullshit on. Hey. <laughs> you know, I, I, I certainly don't deserve the success that has come to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, there, if there is a god, she, she is smiling upon me. Either that or someone down there likes me. <laughs> I mean, either way. But um, life is just too good. I mean, I'm not rich, but I consider myself fortunate that I can walk and see. 
because mm -hmm. there are people and, and friends that I care about dearly that can't even even do those two things. Mm -hmm. So you know, when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can find my way to the bathroom and I can piss into the toilet without missing it, that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. yes, you know. And I have to get up and pee like three or four times because of all the salt I eat. Oh really? Yeah. That's um, a common problem. I'm like a sodium freak. <laughs> You told me in the last interview that you used to like to scare, you know, as, as affectionate as you, much affection as you yeah. like your older sisters, you like to scare the shit out of them. Anything. I, I would wait under their beds for four or five hours yeah. just to grab their feet when they came in. Man, what, how can you explain this? Lack of attention. Mm. I believe that as, as the last of, you know, six children, I kind of got the impression that maybe my parents like really didn't want to be bothered so much, which, you know, I'm not looking for self-pity. I'm just, you know, putting myself into their, their shoes. Mm. I mean, after having six kids, that's, that's gotta be a very tiring thing to do. You know, my father, uh, when I was a little kid, you know, he was in his forties and his, and his, and his fifties. So he was not really too into, you know, going out and like throwing the ball around with me or, you know, taking me, you know, to the zoo or something. So I guess I craved attention, you know, like most children do oh, and yeah. need. Cool. And uh, I, I, I was the little brother from hell. Hmm. I believe the fear of them. Ah. Probably. Yeah. You know, um, it's really strange that I, I lived down in the basement. Of, of the house that I was raised in now, you know, I put sheetrock up on the walls and, you know, and I put a bathroom in and a kitchen and stuff. But I was horrified to go into this basement mm. as a kid because I thought that I was going to be uh, attacked by these rock monsters that I kept dreaming about. Right. Like these creatures made of stone that, like, as I was trying to run up the stairs, their, their arms would uh, become uh, telescopic and they grab me by the back of the shirt and like you know that feeling in dreams when you just can't move oh, yeah. and they're like they're pulling me down and mm -hmm. so you know now i live down there which is a strange thing and they actually turned out to be great guys <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, about i guess when i was about 13 or 14 right you know i was not not one of these little kids or like you know one of these little boys that actually hated girls. I, I always actually liked girls. Mm, well, I mean, you said you surrounded by them. And, uh, I mean, I did like, you know, want to touch them, not, not in a sexual way, but I wanted to examine them almost from, from like a cold scientific, you know, right. point of view. Yeah. But, but it, it was also like a very sensual thing to me, like how soft their skin was and, you know, running my fingers, you know, through their hair and stuff. But, uh, you know, now I get to do that with all the women, so mm -hmm. that 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 need has been satiated. Right. I see. So you still examine them in the same way. There's nothing sexual there at all. <laughs> uh, there was some minor sexual activity involved. Okay. I was actually, I think, pretty old. I was about almost 19 years old. Mm. And. Uh, but I believe that I've made off a lost time. Mm -hmm. well, absolutely, that's the main thing. Did religion play much of a part in your upbringing? Yes, my father uh, was a Russian Orthodox Catholic, right. and my mother was a Roman Catholic, and mm. so I got like a double whammy from from both sides. Like, yeah. You know, my father was not that religious, but but my mother was always. Uh, with the rosary beads and you know the prayers and all this and that and uh they of course attempted to indoctrinate me i i was sent to a catholic school for eight years where i mean i i got a really really good education yeah you know I, you know not because i was taught by catholics but you know because this was how they made their money and if and if i was not learning you know my parents would take me out of the school and, and they would lose my uh, tuition right so i mean i guess that i could have went to a jewish school or, or like a muslim school or you know protestant it would have been the same thing but it it was a very uh 
uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, a condensed type of education, mm. very intensive. You know, there weren't too many children in the class, and the nuns were quite fierce. Mm. I mean, I, I'm actually kind of uh, surprised that I'm, I'm not uh, mentally scarred from them. You're not. No, I'm not. Mm. I mean, you know, when uh, when they used to pull me by the hair or you know do what nuns do. Yeah. I would just laugh, and that would make them really, really mad. And they would just, you know, pull my hair harder, and I just not. And no matter what they did, I would not stop laughing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, until they, uh, they called my parents up, and they told my parents that I had uh, emotional problems because I, I would not stop laughing. And my parents said, uh, "We know." <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a problem with intimidating people without meaning to? Yes, and uh, I feel really bad about that. Mm. I mean, there there is nothing that I can do about my <laughs> stature. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm six foot six. I weigh two hundred thirty pounds. <clears throat> I, you know, I I can't help it, and it's a it's a strange thing that most of the physical problems that I have with people are from really small guys who who mm. are out to prove something. Yeah, and when a big guy fights a small guy, there it's it's a no win situation. Mm -hmm. Because if I kick the shit out of him, I look like a bully. If God forbid he kicks the shit out of me, mm. well, man, we think I have to do something about raising my testosterone level. Can you handle yourself in a fight? Most of the fights that I've had usually turned into wrestling matches, you know, types of things. Whereas, like, you know, somebody would hit me, and I would just grab them and. I would like maul them. You know, my my thing is to to get people on the ground and bash their head against the pavement. That right. that usually, you I know. See. But I mean, I'm not I'm not one to like have a boxing match in the street with you know somebody. If mm -hmm. if I'm gonna fight somebody, I want them dead. Right. And until somebody pulls me off, I will bash their head against the sidewalk until their their brains come out of their eye sockets. Mm, that is quite severe, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But, but you know, usually if if I get into a situation like that, this person deserves it. Mm. Has that happened often? Almost never. So have you seen someone's brains come out of their eye sockets before? Not yet, but there's still time. Oh yeah, there's, yeah, there's plenty of time for that. There's, I mean, I am I am definitely capable of it. Mm. I mean, uh, I I don't think that I would have any problem with actually murdering somebody. Hmm. I, you know, if if I knew that I could get away with it, I mean, there there are people that I would like to kill with, yeah. with my bare hands. Right. I don't want to stab somebody or shoot them. That's 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 too easy. I want these people to actually feel my anger. Mm -hmm. You know. But the thing is, like when I fight somebody. If they get scared, or if they stop fighting, I cannot touch them after that, because I feel sorry for them. Yeah. I, I feel like, um, like I'm hitting a puppy with a newspaper, like this thing is cowering. I, I can't hurt anybody if, mm. if they're cowering. It's like you know somebody stands up to me and they, and they want to do like this you know one to one thing. I have no problem with that. I mean, mm. you know, I've I've won fights. I've lost fights. But I don't run away from them. I would have thought that more often than not, you'd be more more likely to crush someone with your intellect than your fist. Generally, I don't fight anyone unless they touch me or they touch somebody I'm with. Mm. You now people can say stuff, and you know maybe I'll let it go because as the law stands, you know if you it, if you have a problem with someone. You, you cannot have a physical confrontation with them unless you go to jail. Mm -hmm. No one's worth going to jail for. No. I've got you know too many things I have to do. But if someone puts their hands on me, that's it. If you'd like to hear the full 51 minute version of this interview, then click here. Meanwhile, here you can click on a video that YouTube thinks you might fancy watching. Let's see if they're right. Thanks for watching this, and until next time, stay possessed. Bye, Metal.